Sehr geehrte Damen und Herren, mit Rücksicht auf die geordneten Versammlungsordnung, I should like to ask you to stop taking pictures in the room here. Everybody else, please don't use your mobile phones and please switch them off altogether. Thank you very much. Liebe Aktionärinnen, Dear shareholders, verehrte Damen und Herren, ladies and gentlemen, in my capacity as chairman of the supervisory board, I hereby open this year's general meeting, the 130th meeting, and will chair the meeting in accordance with Article 21, Sentence 1 of our Articles of Association. I should like to welcome you most cordially, ladies and gentlemen, shareholders, shareholder representatives, representatives of the media, our guests, and of course also everybody attending via the Internet. Thank you very much for having accepted our invitation to our annual general meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, this year again we do offer guided tours through our production facilities. The tours will actually start after the end of this general meeting. Should you be interested, please get in touch with our staff at the information counter. Some formalities to begin with. Notary Public Dr. Peter Siegel from Stuttgart will record today's general meeting. He sits next to me here. Uh, from the Board of Management, Dr. Bert Martens sends his apologies. He cannot attend for health reasons. We wish him all the best from this place here. Uh, Dr. Julia kuhn Pech sends her apologies. She's got an unpostponable commitment. And Gunnar Kulian, also for health reasons, all the best to him also. The a general meeting has been duly convened with all relevant formal notice requirements having been observed. The invitation with the agenda was published, also together with the proposed resolutions of the management, in the Federal German Gazette Bundesanzeiger of April 15, 2019, and there is a reference copy that was presented to the notary public. On the 15th of April 2019 was the invitation or the Information on the convocation was passed on to those media that can be expected to spread the information throughout the European Union. The information was also published on the website of Audi. All counter motions that were received in time were published in accordance with legal requirements on the website of Audi AG, including the representations of the management. Ladies and gentlemen, I determined the area with the chairs and the accessible areas from here all the way to the entry and exit desks to be the attendance area of this annual general meeting. There are speakers transmitting the assembly. It can be followed in the entire attendance area. Please make sure that you do not create any disturbance to the shareholders that want to follow the meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, together with your entry ticket, you received a voting card block at the entrance. Please make sure that you receive the voting card blocks for all of your tickets. Should this not be the case, you will receive the voting card blocks at the entrance. Once the attendance has been established, I will announce it to the meeting. Furthermore, the attendance list will be updated continuously. It is available on the screens at the information counter. If you want to leave the meeting in between or altogether, please inform the staff at the exit counters and you can determine a proxy while you're away. As far as Audi AG is concerned, we've got Reinhard Schettel and Stefan Schauf as proxies to be appointed by you. To give the proxies, we prepared some forms that are part of your voting card blocks or participants of the meeting. Would you please take your bags and valuables when leaving the meeting? And that is important for security reasons. Ladies and gentlemen, dear shareholders, if you want to address any items on the agenda, please check in with the staff at the speaker's table on the right-hand side right next to the stage. Please uh, tell them your name, maybe the name of your proxy giver, the items on the agenda that you'd like to address, and your attendance number. The attendance number can be found on the top of your voting card block. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to ask you to rise from your seats in honor of those members of Audi Group, of the Audi Group, who've passed away since the last annual general meeting. Thank you for having risen from your seats in honor of those who have passed away. Dear shareholders, please let me now explain the report of the supervisory board. After my presentation, the board of management will report. We then have a general debate. After the end of the general debate, the voting will take place. So much by way of formalities. And I'd now like to present the report of the supervisory board. And I'm the chairman of the supervisory board presenting it in this function. Meine Meine Damen und Herren. Ladies and gentlemen, 2018 was a challenging year for Audi. The changeover to the new test cycles temporarily led to a reduction in production and sales. On top of this, we had a change at the top management level. In spite of this, and in spite of this very difficult general business environment, Audi in the business year 2018 before special items achieved an operating result of 4.7 billion euros and an operating return on sales of 7.9%. On behalf of the entire supervisory board, I should like to thank the entire Audi staff for this achievement and performance. Sie alle haben mit hohem persönlichen With your commitment and dedication, you have also supported the changes that have been initiated at Audi. As you know, the automotive industry finds itself in the fundamental transformation. The market environment, because of growing geopolitical uncertainties, has become very volatile. The general economic risks in important markets keep increasing, as do the regulatory requirements. And it is against this background that we have to cope with and manage the change towards electric mobility and the integration of uh, cars into the internet that are far-reaching impacts. In order to manage this transformation and cope with the challenges, but also in order to use and tap into the new opportunities, we need courage, inventiveness, stamina, and solidarity. And in particular, we need strong leadership that is very much forward-looking. Audi, with its technical competence and its strong team, stands big chances in this transformation. It is all about making Audi fit for the new world of premium mobility, and it is all about to continue, continuing to live up to the claim Vorsprung durch Technik. As regards the measures necessary along the way here, some of which are painful, painful the Board of Management has the unlimited support of the supervisory board. Ladies and gentlemen, there was an election to the new supervisory board last year, and there was a new supervisory board. In its constituting meeting, I was elected uh, chairman of the supervisory board with my deputy, Peter Mosch. In addition to that, we had elections to the members of the negotiating committee, the presiding committee, the audit committee, and the diesel uh, committee. In its four ordinary meetings in 2018, the supervisory board discussed the general economic conditions, the business performance, the business policy, and the strategy of the company. The board of management informed the supervisory board on the risk management and risk situation. We also dealt in detail with the opportunities and risks of Audi in key markets. China is to be mentioned in particular, the United States of America and the European markets. The supervisory board, moreover, approved a new compensation system for the member of the board of management. I'll explain this in detail later. 
According to schedule and together with the Board of Management, we determined the content of the Statement of Conformity according to Section 161 of the German Stock Corporation Act. The work of the supervisory board in the year under report was dominated by dealing with the diesel issue. The V6 TD 3.0 TDI engine and, of course, also personnel decisions. We had six extraordinary meetings in the past fiscal year. On top of this, the presiding committee of the supervisory board in 2018, next to the four ordinary meetings, also met five additional times in extraordinary ones. All members of the supervisory board attended more than half of the meetings. The average attendance rate in the past financial year was at 94.1%. The negotiation committee did not have to be convened in 2018. In the 2018 financial year, the diesel committee met four times. It dealt with the current situation of the diesel issue and also consulted on the current uh, status of the field fix for generation one and two in the U.S. Moreover, the committee obtained comprehensive overview of the yet open issues in the diesel matter regarding the exhaust standards EU 4, 5 and 6 across Europe. The audit committee in the past financial year met once per quarter. Mostly it dealt with the tasks and responsibilities responsible for by law as well as with compliance and audit work. In the management board of the company since the end of the last annual general meeting on 9th of May 2018 the following changes have taken place. As of the end of 2nd October 2018, Mr. Rupert Stadler left the Board of Management of Audi AG. Hans-Joachim Rotenpieler, with effect as of 1st November 2018, took over responsibility for the Technical Development Division. He succeeds Dr. Peter Mertens, who left the company for personal reasons. With effect, as of 1st of January 2019, the supervisory board appointed Mr. Abram Schott to be the CEO of the company. Moreover, the supervisory board appointed Ms. Hildegard Wortmann as a member of the board of management of the company responsible for marketing and sales. Ms. Wortmann will take her office on 1st July 2019. The Munich Public Prosecutor's Office, too, in October 2018, issued an order imposing a fine of 800 million euro against Audi AG. Audi accepted that fine and waived any further remedies. This means that the administrative proceedings against Audi are finalized and concluded. The agreement to that fine was something to be decided by the management board of Audi AG. The board of management arrived at the result that despite of the massive financial impact, it was still in the company's interest to accept this administrative order issuing the fine. The supervisory board also dealt with the administrative order to issue the fine against Audi AG. And also in our appreciation, especially the fact that this will put a final end to the proceedings and thus provide legal certainty to the company were arguments in favor of waiving appeal and remedies against this administrative order. Ladies and gentlemen, the analysis of potential damage claims against former and acting members of the Board of Management is ongoing. We take that analysis very seriously and obtain comprehensive consultancy services by the renowned Gleis Lutz law firm and by Professor Gutter, who is a former chair of the Second Civil Chamber at the Federal Court of Justice in charge of corporate law. Our analysis is oriented solely by the interests of the company. Coming to terms with the diesel issue is one of the most comprehensive and complex analyses of the German industrial history. Several law firms with hundreds of experts and with the operative support of Deloitte are carrying out time-consuming researches through databases. The databases in Germany and in the U.S. alone comprise more than 200 million documents. Additionally, so far, hundreds of interviews have been conducted. We are reviewing and analyzing any potential claims without reservations and irrespective of the persons concerned. Ladies and gentlemen, the 
supervisory and management board independently of each other analyzed and consulted as to which resolutions to propose to the general meeting regarding the granting of discharge to members of the management and the supervisory board for the 2018 financial year. The supervisory board decided to propose to the general meeting that the granting discharge of Mr. Rupert Stadler uh, for financial year 2018 because of the ongoing investigation of the diesel issue to be deferred for the 2018 financial year. We propose that uh, discharge be granted for the 2018 fiscal year for all other members of the Board of Management who held office in the 2018 financial year. Please now permit me some remarks regarding the monitorship. The U.S. monitor, Gary Thompson, Larry Thompson, has been supporting the company for more than two years now in reviewing the activities regarding the diesel issue and also the change process that was initiated. The monitorship is supposed to end in a bit more than a year's time. The monitor provides valuable recommendations as to what still remains to be done from his point of view. In this third year of his monitorship, Larry Thompson will certainly continue to give us important input. The supervisory board has accompanied and supported the work of Larry Thompson and his team, and I personally find the dialogue with him to be extremely productive and would like to thank him very much and his team for the valuable contributions. Ladies and gentlemen, the supervisory board supports the Board of Management in the comprehensive realignment of Audi. In this, we make very sure that the lessons learned from the past and from the mistakes of the past become firmly anchored in all relevant parts of the company and the corporate culture. The necessary resources for this have been created and set aside, and the process of implementation has been initiated. Respecting the law, abiding by internal rules, and acting with integrity – these are to be and will be determining the actions of every single Audi employee. The management board and the supervisory board need to create the necessary conditions for this and this correct attitude across the company needs to be demanded, promoted and we need to be role models for it and all management staff at Audi AG bear a special responsibility in this. And Adhering to and implementing these premises is also a factor by which we will measure the performance of the Audi Board of Management. Ladies and gentlemen, from the point of view of the Supervisory Board, the Board of Management and Audi on the whole are on a good way towards overcoming the diesel crisis and to return to their original strength. The further success of Audi is based on a strong foundation. Being anchored in the Volkswagen Group, the consistent use of the synergies resulting from that with Volkswagen and additionally also with Porsche, a competent and motivated Audi team, our cohesion of employee representation and management, and also a very strong product pipeline with a large number of new and highly attractive e-vehicles. So it is with confidence that Audi can look into the future and shape its future. So much for my report on the work of the supervisory board. Ladies and gentlemen, the supervisory board and the board of management, as regards agenda item four, propose to approve the new system of remuneration for board of management members. The supervisory board of Audi AG has resolved to modify the board of management remuneration system. In the future, it is to focus more on the overall success of the Volkswagen Group to determine the amount of the variable compensation. This will help promote cooperation across the group. For the first time, the objective or target is measured by the increase of corporate values. This is more future-oriented and thus follows the recommendation of the German Corporate Governance Code. Moreover, the new system also takes into account penalty and uh, claim-back clauses, promoting culture, integrity and compliance of the board members. Let me explain the general principles to you now. Management board compensation in the future will consist of a fixed base salary and two variable remuneration components. One is an annual bonus and the other one is a long-term bonus in the form of a so-called performance share plan. 
The first variable remuneration component is the annual bonus, which will reflect the company's success of the current financial year. And this annual bonus makes up 40% of the variable pay. As of 2020, it will be determined half by achieving group targets and half by achieving targets of the Audi brand. In the introductory year of 2019, the annual bonus will be based to 100% on the Audi brand. To determine target achievement, we rely on the operative return on sales and the return on investment. The targets for ROS and ROI are reviewed annually. There is no cap as to the total amount of that annual bonus. Refraining from setting such a cap is, from the supervisory board's point of view, appropriate, since the target parameters immediately reflect the economic situation of the company, and with a particularly good result, therefore, a high short-term variable remuneration is indeed justified. If a particularly good result is based on extraordinary developments, the supervisory board can use its discretion and limit the annual bonus in order to preserve appropriateness. The second variable remuneration component is a long-term bonus, which comes in the shape of the so-called performance share plan. This performance share plan is a stock-oriented remuneration element and is or has a three-year perspective into the future. This long-term bonus makes up 60% of the variable remuneration. At the beginning of the three-year period of the performance share plan, the management board members are allocated a preliminary number of virtual preferred shares of the Volkswagen Group, the so-called performance shares. After the end of the three-year duration, the final number of performance shares is determined on the basis of average target achievement of profit or earnings per share across the Volkswagen Group, the EPS during that three-year duration. The final amount to be paid out results from the final number of performance shares, the price of the Volkswagen preferred share at the end of the three-year period and, during, and the paid-out dividend during the three-year period. The amount to be paid out from the performance share plan is limited to 200% of the target amount. With this new system for remuneration of the management board members, we integrate the culture and integrity component. In cases of an individual's misconduct, Audi AG can reduce or even claim back the variable remuneration of any board member depending on the severity of the misconduct. The supervisory board is convinced that with this remuneration system we are setting the right incentives for the members of the board of management. I would now like to thank you for your attention and would like to give the floor to Bramschott and Alexander Zeitz to give their reports on the 2018 financial year, the course of business, and also report on the current situation of the company. Bram, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dr. Dees. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let me also welcome you warmly on behalf of the entire board of management of Audi AG. The stronger the headwinds, the more important it is to have a firm position. In our industry, we are faced with headwinds, tech tariffs, import tariffs, Brexit, highly competitive markets, and headwinds from stricter regulation for CO2, for example, of the next stage in the WLTP test cycle. I'm sure many of you are wondering, what is actually happening in the automotive industry? Does it have a viable future at all? And very specifically, is our money still well invested at Audi? I can assure you that yes, it is. We want you as shareholders, employees, or customers to have that tingling feeling when you hear the word Audi, a mix of enthusiasm, fascination, or an irresistible attraction. In my view, this will enable Audi to achieve a significantly higher enterprise value. We have a clear plan for doing that. We want to make Audi more profitable and more valuable. Alexander Seitz will present the plan to you shortly, and then I will complete the picture, our new strategy. This strategy makes me very confident. In it, I see a spark that will make Audi shine again. 
that will make this fire big that we carry within us. We have a history of 110 years of passion, a passion that creates something that others think is impossible to reach. There are lessons in life sometimes that are hard, but they are helpful, like 29-year-old Bethany Hamilton's, an impressive woman, a professional on the surfboard. She won her first competition when she was only five years old. Bethany was only 13 when a tiger shark attacked her. She lost her entire left arm in the process, and she was lucky to survive. And now comes the unbelievable part for me. Four weeks after the accident, she started training again. A few months later, she was taking part in competitions again. She has received many prizes for her courage and for her comeback as an athlete. A lot of admiration, indeed. Today, Bethany Hamilton is one of the best surfers in the world. And even though it's not the same thing at all, but still, our tiger shark was the diesel crisis. That lesson felt to us like the loss of an arm. And some people thought Audi would not survive it. The only chance in such a situation is to continue fighting, find your balance again, and consistently apply your own strengths. Be brave and follow your dream. I will talk about that later. In 2018, we presented two completely new models in our portfolio, in addition to a strong range of S and RS models. One of them stands for Audi as an SUV brand, the new Audi Q8. The luxury SUV had its world premiere in China in June. It is the new spearhead of our Q family. The second all-new model stands for our move into e-mobility, the Audi e-tron, which is fully suitable for everyday use. The world premiere was in the U.S. in San Francisco in September. The Audi e-tron is our pioneer, a pioneer of the new era, a pioneer which will be followed by 12 electrified cars by next year, seven plug-in hybrids and five electric cars. Lamborghini has reached a new level with the Urus SUV. The Urus is the first super sports car for everyday use. The responses to this model have been really fantastic. Totally deliveries were up by 51% in 2018, an unbelievable number, with many new customers and a, two di di a double digit margin. Lamborghini is growing. The Audi Group had more than 20 model launches last year. But then the shock grabbed us again. And that is why last year, 2018, was not the best in Audi's history after all. We wanted to hit the market with the highlight of our model initiative, but the new WLTP test cycle was a setback to us. This is a bad situation for every business. You have great products and you cannot sell them as you should or want to. We had to apply for certification for every single model and every single engine transmission combination. Due to this delayed availability, some models were not able to be sold for months. At the end of the year, our car deliveries were 3.5% down year on year. However, we noticed in all of that that our new full-size models were well received by the market. There was a significant growth for us in the C&D segment, and business in China was also strong. We could have sold a lot more, that's clear. As I said, at WLTP cost us volume, and thus revenue and earnings. At 59.2 billion euros, revenue was just below the previous year's level. Operating profit of 3.5 billion euros was a quarter lower than in 2017, partially because it includes one-time effects above all the diesel fine of 0.8 billion euros. As a result, the operating margin of 6% did not meet our expectations. I am not satisfied with that. But coming back to the surfer, we started training again immediately. In 2019, we want to reach out to our customers more strongly through our well-filled product pipeline with a total of 20 new models. 
we're extremely prepared for WLTP2. This means we are working on our weak points. That's clear. The second training component is our transformation plan. Without it, our earnings would have been 1.1 billion euros lower in 2018. The investments in the future must be financed. That is clear. That's why we want the Audi transformation plan to free up not 10, but 15 billion euros by 2022. We're also making our organization processes leaner and faster. More on this now from Alexander Seitz. Ja, meine sehr verehrten Damen und Herren, despite all of the challenges, Audi in 2018 did not stand with its back to the wall. It's true, we did not achieve all of our goals, but we courageously grasped the opportunities. We successfully initiated Audi's restructuring. And with a strengthened range of full-size cars, we've improved our product mix. We moved ahead of the competition with our Audi e-tron and have thus taken a fundamental step towards the future. And despite the one-off influences to special items, the net cash flow at the end of the year was at 2.1 billion euros, the best figure in the Volkswagen Group. Audi has proven again that we are resilient, that we continue to be capable of action even in a difficult terrain, and that we can cope with headwinds. This has really strengthened us. We are setting ourselves new, even higher targets. We want to make Audi more profitable with our new strategy, to give it more value. And that is very important to me as CFO. And this is, we must uh, get rid of ballast and pick up speed. The first month of 2019 are over. So time for a brief interim review. WLTP distorted our product offering also in the first quarter. It is only now that we can again offer our customers a full range of engines and transmissions. And model changes for important volume models, such as the Audi O3, the long wheelbase Audi A6 for China, and the Audi A4 also slowed down our deliveries at first. They decreased in the first four months. It's minus 6%, but we have well-filled order box. With regard to the key financial figures for the first quarter, I would like to draw your attention to a one-time effect. We focus much more strongly now on our Audi core business and are now placing the foreign multi-brand national sales companies at the group level, where they are centrally controlled and reported, which is good, which is positive, because a uniform reporting structure really offers better comparability and transparency for you, our shareholders. As a result of deconsolidation in 2019, some financial figures will be distorted. As far as sales are concerned, revenue was down by 9.8% compared with the prior year quarter. By way of comparison, without the effect of the deconsolidation, in spite of WLT, revenue would have been almost at the previous year level. Because, and that's the good news, our new full-size models are extremely well-received by our customers, well-received by our customers. Nevertheless, WLTP, the model initiative, and high upfront expenditure for the future of our company also left their mark on our operating profit in the first quarter. At 1.1 billion euros in absolute terms, it was 200 million euros down on the previous year. The operating return on sales of 8%, however, is still very satisfactory in the current environment and compared with the competition. And uh, the one-time effect of the deconsolidation is also reflected in the cash flow statement. However, we took targeted measures to improve our investment discipline and achieved a net cash flow of 1.2 billion euros. Significantly worse year on year, but a top figure when you look at our current competition. Net liquidity was at the high prior year level. The first quarter has clearly shown that our measures have been taken effect. But we must not rest on our laurels. Let's look forward to the future. 
How will things develop in 2019? Ladies and gentlemen, in a turbulent environment, we are stabilizing our performance. For car deliveries, this means that as, first, as a first step, we are reducing our WLTP inventories and we are stepping up our model initiative, 20 new models and derivatives. The Audi Q3 is already performing well in Europe. It will be launched then, in the middle of the year, in the important U.S. market and in China. European customers can now order the product upgrade of the Audi A4 bestseller, one of the most popular Audi models in Europe. And in China, the Audi A6 is uh, just experiencing its ramp-up phase. The Audi e-tron is in the starting blocks in the United States and will also be available in China in the second half of the year. In addition, we are about to launch numerous Audi sport models, sporty, emotional, and highly profitable cars that we can all look forward to. We anticipate a moderate increase in deliveries at the end of the year. And this will also be reflected in our revenue situation. Despite headwinds from currency exchange rates, we expect a slight increase in revenue. With the deconsolidation of the multi-brand national sales companies, we are consistently adjusting our long-term return target. Our new and uh, ambitious target corridor for the operating return on sales is 9 to 11 percent. For this year, we expect a return on sales of between 7 and 8.5 percent. Financial strength is important, especially right now. With the continuation of high, front, high upfront expenditure, we have set ourselves a uh, goal of achieving net cash flow of between 2.5 and 3 billion euros, top credit worthiness. 2019 will not be a record financial year. However, we will systematically continue doing our homework. U.S. shareholders and we as the Board of Management must look even further into the future. And this is why in 2019 we will lay important foundations for an Audi of the future that creates more volume for the customers, for the employees, and for you, ladies and gentlemen. You may think now sites must be crazy to talk about seriously about valuable enhancement in this uncertain environment. But we are working consistently on ourselves. We do invest where it's important, and we are getting rid of old dead wood. We are developing our business model into new profitable areas. We have already made some important decisions for a profitable, more valuable Audi. In our current planning round, we have set ourselves the target of investing 40 billion euros in Audi's future capabilities between now and 2023. We are planning 14 billion euros of that for automated driving, digital services, and electric mobility. This is necessary as upfront expenditure, but it also triggers immense tension within the organization. We are counteracting this with the Audi transformation plan. It enables us to reduce costs and make more targeted use of revenue potential. It also helps to establish change in our processes. In this way, we are freeing funds for investments, securing our targets, return targets. We have tightened the ATP a target from the original 10 billion to 15 billion euros by the end of 2022, because Audi can do better, but also because we don't want to give anything away. It's not going to be comfortable, but we put the profit zone clearly before and above the comfort zone. 70% of the ATP target has already been defined with concrete measures today. And to achieve it, we are addressing the entire value chain. Now it's all about the implementation. For example, we are streamlining our portfolio. We orient ourselves on what the customers are willing to pay and uh, what they are not willing to pay for. This reduces complexity and brings down product cost. In the case of personnel, we do take a close look at the need for replacement when there are vacancies. We focus very clearly on future fields, and we do qualify and train, and train the existing team because we need the right people in the right places. Another example. Chinese, the market of opportunities, has enormous revenue potential for Audi. And this is why we are strengthening our research and development activities on site. The pulse of the Chinese market beats in China. We develop in China for China. 
This enables us to serve our customers in our largest single market even better. In addition, until 2022, we will launch 20, uh, 12, 12 locally manufactured models for our Chinese customers, including many electric cars. In the second half of the year, for example, the all-electric long wheelbase version of the Q2, a product especially for China. With our strong partners, we want to double our deliveries in the medium term and turn the car into a smartphone on wheels with attractive services. For the profitable further development of your company, we are also holding discussions with our social partners. It's all about making our workforce and our plants competitive, competitive for the future. We consistently check what really does belong to our core business and what doesn't. How we can optimize the division of labor between the sites and the utilization of the capacities of the plants. Which non-wage tariff benefits we have to take a close look at and how we can organize the shift system in a flexible and future-oriented way. An example. Together with the Works Council, we have decided to cancel one of the a night shift at the Ingolstadt plant. This, of course, required a great deal of flexibility from the employee's consent, but it was a business necessity and has given us considerably more entrepreneurial freedom at the Ingolstadt uh, location. It is our aspiration to deal with resources responsibly and thus generate added value. This applies in particular to the resources that you, our shareholders, that you make available to us. And this is why we are increasingly focusing on the return on capital, which is the efficiency of our investments, basically. In my opinion, a return on investment or capital of 10% by 2018 is not enough. 11 to 14% is the plan for 2019, but uh, Audi has already previously achieved significantly more than 20%. And for us, as the Board of Management team, the goal is clear. This is where we want to go again in the medium term, more than 21%. That's the plan. And that is why we manage our investments in a manner that is even more aiming or oriented to the capital market. We only invest in projects that promise an appropriate return. And appropriate can only mean premium for us. Nothing else would fit into our strategy. In doing so, we also include the new currency CO2. In future, we will consistently prioritize our product portfolio according to the capital value and the CO2 contribution. It's quite simple. We do know that combustion engines will become more and more expensive in the medium, medium term, in particular because of EU7. Electric cars, on the other hand, are becoming more and more affordable because of uh, increasing numbers, economies of scale, and technical progress, synergies in the Volkswagen Group, and also thanks to CO2 credits. And CO2 credits are hard cash in today's world. Accordingly, CO2 now also gets a price tag in our product calculation. This acts as a negative factor for the product margins, of course, with combustion engines with more CO2 emissions, and as a positive factor for the more environmentally friendly electric cars. With this type of controlling, we provide our product managers with the right incentives to develop more environmentally friendly vehicles. As chief financial officer, I am already looking forward to every electric car that's sold, even if the return cannot yet keep up with that of the conventional models. In this way, we achieve sustainability in our financial structures and our portfolio. Dear shareholders, our common goal is to get Audi back into the fast lane. In our turbulent times, there are not many guarantees. But I will gladly give you one. We are doing our very best to get Audi back on track. More profitable, more sustainable, and more valuable. And this is what our new strategy is all about. Bram Schutt will now present it to you. Thank you for your trust. Thank you, Alexander. There's one point that's particularly close to my heart when I think of 2018. Thanks. Thank you to the Audi team. Thank you to our more than 90,000 employees who've done an excellent job. And I know that I speak on behalf of you as well. 
everybody working at Audi deserves recognition for their special performance in a difficult time. Meine sehr verehrte Aktionärinnen, shareholders, the future belongs to those who believe in the truthfulness of their dreams. That is what Eleanor Roosevelt once said as First Lady of the United States. We also have a dream. Our dream is new mobility. We want to play a major role in shaping this new mobility. And I would even take it one step further. I want Audi to be at the forefront of this change. To do that, we need a vision, a goal. And we have one, unleashing the beauty of sustainable mobility. Sustainable mobility must be CO2 neutral. Mobility of our customers can only be responsible when it's CO2 neutral. Our core product, the automobile, should contribute to the progress of our society. This requires safe, comfortable, and above all, clean cars. And we are doing everything to achieve that. Everyone at Audi, every day, with integrity and with courage. At present, there is a lot of talk about the soul of a car. And I can understand that very well. Emotion is important. Driving a car must continue to be fun and attractive as well in the future. When we say unleashing the beauty of sustainable mobility, this is more than just a vision. This is a promise to our customers, a promise of a unique customer experience. No ifs or buts. The Audi e-tron GT shows, as we've shown it in Geneva, how sensationally sporty and desirable e-mobility can be. We will launch it next year. But that is only the beginning. In the medium term, we want to have the strongest range of electric models to compete in the premium segment. We want to sell about one million electrified cars each year by the middle of the next decade. This means an increase of our sales expectations for plug-in hybrids and electric cars to 40% of all deliveries. And we want to dramatically improve our ecological impact by significantly reducing our CO2 footprint, the footprint of our cars, that is, over their entire life cycle by 2025. Our plan is to reduce it by 30%. We want to manage the entire company without CO2 emissions throughout the company. For, for example, when it comes to electricity and the heat we need in our production plants. We will be CO2 neutral by 2050 at the latest, like all brands in the VW Group. We want to help slow down climate change, and we're following three principles to do so, reducing CO2 effectively and sustainably, converting energy supply to renewable sources, and compensating for unavoidable emissions. A better CO2 footprint starts with our suppliers. We make this a key element of our supplier contracts. We are committed to sustainability along the entire supply chain and value chain. Sustainability also relates to our business operations. We will therefore increase our enterprise value in a sustainable way as well. All of this is what we mean when we say unleashing the beauty of sustainable mobility. In the future, credibility and trust will be essential for people's purchasing decisions. And so will strong, emotionally fascinating brands. We want to embody both credibility and fascination. We want to be the most progressive premium brand, the car brand with the greatest appeal, with the best customer experience, with exciting customer-relevant innovation, and with breathtaking design. Our customers should have the good feeling of being mobile in a sustainable way, being supported by assist systems, autonomous driving, and a seamlessly integrated digital offering. And one day, accompanied by the power of artificial intelligence. Our mission, mission along this route is called Consistently Audi. That's what we have called our new strategy. Why Consistently Audi? Have we lacked this consistency in the past here and there? It's a good question. That may have been the case here and there. But for me, it is all about the future. 
the breathtaking pace of change requires consistency in our strategic orientation more than ever, in fact, and consistent, consistency in execution. Doing something consistently means doing it with purpose, systematically, and with full efforts. Systematically means that one step ties in with another, and you can only really do something with your full effort if you drop in anything that's a drag on your energy. Consistent action means that we drop all activities that distract us from our goal. First focus, then consistently implement. That is what we mean by consistently, Audi. Ladies and gentlemen, it no longer makes any sense today to define a strategy in a rigid way for the next 10 years. No one knows what's going to happen tomorrow. We're making Audi safe for bad weather ahead and agile so that we can act consistently, quickly and sustainably. sustainably. The transformation of the automotive industry is a great opportunity for us, we believe. We are shaping it with more determination than our competitors. That is our goal. Our strategy, first of all, describes what is particularly close to our hearts in this. Consistently customer-oriented, consistently electric, consistently connected, and consistently sustainable. Let me start with customer. What does it mean? We want Audi to become the company with the most satisfied customers. This is because I'm firmly convinced that customer satisfaction and only customer satisfaction will be the hardest currency and the best currency in the automotive market one day. To stand out in other fields is becoming increasingly difficult. Those who have the most satisfied customers are the most successful ones, and that is something that only customers will decide. And that is why we're creating a customer advisory committee. This is a real novelty for our industry, and we will involve the customer from the very first project sketch at the top decision level. We don't only need customers at the end for our results. We need them from the beginning. They are our clients, and this is the only way in which we can create the perfect customer experience. In this context, customers should use all the advantages of a connected world or be able to, because just as products and services are merging, the physical and the virtual space will also become one. Throughout the entire life of a product, the customer should always receive new additional value. We will accompany our customers throughout this journey, and we will use every single point of contact with our customers to turn them into real Audi fans. The question for us to measure customer satisfaction is, how likely is it that you will recommend Audi to a friend? When Hildegard Wortmann joins us on the 1st of July as Board of Management member responsible for sales and marketing, she will be our chief customer officer, the customer's permanent advocate. This is also why we will bring together the entire digital service business. And I'd like to take the opportunity to say that we are very much looking forward to working with Ms. Wortmann. Ladies and gentlemen, we know from our customers that they particularly like two-car concepts. With our Sportback concept, we not only established the premium compact segment, more, there's more than that. With the A5, the A7, the Sportback became a design icon 10 years ago. In July, we will present the Q3 as a Sportback. In the future, we will expand the Sportback concept across the entire portfolio to include A and Q models as well. The Sportback concept is a USP uh, of Audi, unmistakably Audi, just like our Q models, which will become even more important in the future. In 2025, one in two Audi cars will be an SUV, according to our plan, and a large proportion of them, of course, will have electric drives. This brings me to my second point, consistently electric. We will be at the forefront of the transformation towards e-mobility, or perhaps I should better say we will set the pace for e-mobility for everyday use. For us, everyday use means quick and easy charging. It means ever-increasing range and highly emotive models. With the e-tron, we have already occupied the pole position in the premium segment, which is promising. In 2020, we will launch five electric cars, and there will be significantly more after that. Audi will have 20 all-electric models by 2025. The next generation of the Audi A8 might well be all-electric. This has not been decided yet, but I can well imagine that. 
we're also thinking about revolutionizing the top-end segment with a completely new concept for the A8. Ladies and gentlemen, the VW Group has exactly the right strategy with a consistent focus on e-mobility. E-mobility is no longer about whether, but only about how. To be precise, how can we make the transition as fast as possible? For the electric drive, for, or the electric drive portfolio for the upper automotive, automobile categories of the premium segment is broader. We include plug-in hybrids and in future H-trons, our research and development activities for hydrogen, for fuel cells, they are located here in the competence center in Ekazon. And this is how we will also, we expect them to be used live in 10 years' time, and this is also how we will meet the performance and range demands of our fleet customers with long-distance needs. Let me now turn to consistently connected. In the future, the major innovations in vehicles will primarily be digital. That's clear. A car will be full of intelligent software because that is what our customers expect. They want to continue their digital communication seamlessly inside their car. We are therefore creating an open digital ecosystem, a highly adaptive system with fast online updates. And it will have the highest level of data protection and security. Premium means that at Audi that we protect our customers' data. Connectivity also includes e-commerce and car retailing. Together with the VW Group, we will launch online used car sales in 10 markets as of next year. And another new service, we are launching our online new car sales with the first model the week after the next. With the Audi e-tron, we will launch digital on-demand services known as Function On Demand in 23 markets this year, and other features will follow. In order to shorten long journeys or waiting times, we will launch digital infotainment offerings in 2020, including streaming content. So, in Consistently Connected, we see earnings potential of 1 billion euros per year, which is a significant number. And finally, consistently sustainable. For us, sustainability means combining business and the environment, responsible, transparent, and honest business operations, and above all, acting with an awareness of the long-term perspective. CO2-neutral mobility is the essential basis for further growth. Our e-tron plant in Brussels has start op started operations as a CO2-neutral Audi location. In 2020, we will turn the world's largest engine plant CO2-neutral in Gyur, Hungary. We're gradually introducing 100% green power in all our plants, and we are converting our heat supply in all German plants to biogas. So step by step, we will make all our plants CO2-neutral by 2025. Anyone who's been following our recent plans will have noticed that we are doubling our speed in this respect as well. Our consistently sustainable agenda also includes, includes a closed water cycle and the targeted reuse of resources. And sustainability is more than environmental protection. protection. It also includes the Group Wide Together for Integrity, integrity program, which combines all our initiatives for corporate culture, compliance, and integrity. At Audi, we are all agreed that something like the diesel crisis should never have happened in the first place, and there won't be anything like that here ever again. Let me clearly say that, never again. We have therefore drawn up golden rules for vehicle development. We've separated certification from the rest of the organization, strengthened the principle of multiple controls, tightened our processes all the way down to documentation, and developed group-wide principles of conduct all the way to punishing misconduct. We're in the process of following and have followed the recommendation, recommendations of U.S. Monitor Larry Thompson. And with him, we have an experienced supporter at our side. He and his team give us the right impetus and signals for our realignment. Constructively critical and pragmatically goal-oriented, so thank you for this important work. Ladies and gentlemen, there are four attributes that describe how we want to achieve our strategic goals. Consistently team consistently focused, consistently synergistic, and consistently profitable. 
Consistently team means we instead of me. What we have ahead of us is a fundamental cultural change and a change in behavior of and for all our employees. This cultural change is mission critical to Audi's future success. And I'm aware that cultural change cannot be imposed. But if we are to achieve our goals, we need a culture of trust. And above all, we need to embrace and enjoy change. I want significantly fewer hierarchies at Audi. I would like to transfer a great deal of decision-making competence to where the specialists are. And this is also a matter for us in the Board of Management, because cultural change does not start at the second row. It starts from the top, tone from the top, the Board of Management. We want to become more agile, fast, and flexible. We're pursuing clear, achievable, but very ambitious targets as discoverers and enablers. What I would like to achieve is a new attitude, an attitude in which everything we do is thought from the customer perspective. And you can see now that we are coming full circle. Consistently focused. Reality shows that as a company, Audi has been involved in too many things for several years. So there will be many things in the future that we will drop or things that we do less of. We will concentrate maximum resources on our key projects. This means less complexity in new models, less complexity in our range as a whole. We have eliminated almost one-third of our engine transmission combinations, and we continue to screen our portfolio for customer relevance. In addition, we now decide at an earlier stage which ideas from our innovation exchanges we want to implement and which not. That's because focusing also involves leaving things out. Let me take the Audi TT as an example. For two years, we've offered this young emotive car as a coupe and a roadster. We're exhibiting the special model Audi TT Quantum Grey Edition here today at the Audi AGM. And with it, we are starting online sales for new vehicles. In a few years' time, we will replace the TT with a new emotive model in the same price range. How many years? That's, of course, the question. Because it's a different TT, a very different one, with an electric TT, perhaps. So, as I said before, focusing also means leaving things out. For example, the R8 sports car. Do we need a successor with a combustion engine? Is it really in line with our vision? The decision hasn't been taken yet, but it's a discussion we'll have to have. There are no taboos. Consistently synergistic. What does this mean? It means smarter partnerships within, outside our group. Yes, we are proud of our own know-how, but it would be foolish not to make use of this potential. The Q4 e-tron concept is a prime example of how we can implement a premium product on the module electrification platform, MEB, the group platform, or take the partnership with Porsche, our PPE, premium architecture for electrification, is the basis for the most emotive form of e-mobility, from design and proportions to prestige and performance. And there are other things for which we are now developing and using platforms in, in a way that achieve synergies, above all with key future technologies such as autonomous driving or a single data platform. Automated driving is so important for two-thirds of our premium customers that they would even consider to switch brands for it. Above all, they would like to have a highway pilot for long distances. The enormous effort and required standardization make large-scale cooperation necessary in this field. Our premium, premium mobility service, Audi On Demand, is another example. The Audi I want right now, when and where I want it. We will integrate our retailing even more. And we want to scale our offering with a major partner, with Sixth, and start with this partnership in the fourth quarter. Audi on demand customers can then use the entire Sixth fleet of high quality Audi models via an app. We will roll out this new mobility service in the whole of Europe after that. The spectrum of Audi on Demand will range from short-term rentals to all-year leasing covering the full range spectrum. This is something that the market isn't offering yet, using that offer and still being premium consistently. So as you can see, we have plant synergies in all key areas, electrification, autonomous driving, and our more premium mobility service. This is based on a simple rationale. 
we will cooperate wherever our brand profile remains unaffected. unaffected. On the fundamental work, this means that we achieve significantly more speed and significantly less expense in an intelligent way. Now, Alexander Seitz has talked about our medium-term financial targets, consistently pro profitable, an ROI of after CO2, sorry, return on investment after CO2 of more than 21%, an operating return on sales of between 9 and 11%, and a significantly increased enterprise value. And we want to be consistently profitable in everything we do. We want to operate sustainably and profitably in every respect. This will create the scope for investment in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, we've defined the business model and the key earnings drivers. We know what it takes to win and who it takes. Since I joined Audi, I have been talking to many employees of the company day after day. The development, sales, design, the shop floor, the reception desk, at the racetrack. Every day I meet people who enjoy their work. My fellow board members and I know what we can do at Audi. With the new strategy, with consistently Audi, we have a compass that will take us through good and bad weather. We know where the journey is leading us. We know what we're doing this for. This is extremely important three and a half years after the beginning of the diesel crisis. We want to become stronger for our, our employees, more innovative for our customers more transparent and environmentally aware for our society, and a more valuable company for you, our shareholders. The Audi spirit has made this brand strong, and the Audi spirit will also help us to regain our former strength. The Audi spirit will turn a vision into reality. Results. Or to quote Eleanor Roosevelt again, the future belongs to those who believe in the truthfulness of their dreams. And that's what we do at Audi. Thank you very much. Uh, short. Mr. Short, Mr. Seitz, thank you very much for your talks. Ladies and gentlemen, before we proceed with the agenda and following that the general debate, we are now stopping the public live transmission on the Internet. I'd like to thank all those who watched and